Hey there, welcome to this study guide or unit test for the periodic table. This is a great tool to make sure that you are ready to go into a unit assessment that your teacher is going to give you, or just a way to test your knowledge in general. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the periodic table, and each of these slides is gonna be headed by the title of one of my videos. So if you find that a question um, doesn't make sense or you're not really sure on the answer and you need to go back and learn more, definitely check out the periodic table playlist because I would be happy for you to go back, check that out, make sure everything's good. And if there's any questions remaining from there, of course, ask them in the comments of that video. Okay, the very first question here is on the history of the periodic table. I'm a little too big. Um, how was Mendeleev's periodic table originally organized? Why was Mendeleev able to leave spaces in his original periodic table? And what are two differences between Mendeleev's periodic table and the one that we use today? Make sure to pause the video to answer the question. Mendeleev's periodic table was originally organized by atomic mass. Um, and to answer the final question, um, the difference between Mendeleev's table and the one that we use today is that, of course, there's more elements on it and it is now organized by atomic number. Mendeleev was able to leave spaces in his periodic table because his pattern was super strong and reliable. And that's how he knew that elements that were missing really just hadn't been discovered yet. Not that they were missing from his pattern. The second question asks, what are the name for each of the following? And then there are some sections of the periodic table for you to review. Group one are called the alkali metals. Group two are alkaline earth metals. The D block or the center section of the periodic table, group three through 12, those are the transition metals. The lower section are lanthanides. The bottom row of the lower section are actinides. Group 17 are the halogens and group 18 are the noble gases. And in reading this, I have realized that I left off the staircase. What are the things on the staircase called? I hope you got that right. They are called metalloids. Some real old school people will call them semi-metals, but there you have it. Now the next question, what are some properties for each of those groups? Um, I didn't wanna give you the answers, but take a minute to jot down some properties. And again, throw in those staircase metalloids. The alkali metals in group one are highly reactive metals and they form plus one ions and strong bases. Group two, alkaline metals, they also form strong bases. They form plus two ions and they are decently reactive. Groups three through 12 can change their charge by rearranging their inner electrons. You may have learned that as their oxidation state. And if they are in a compound that is able to dissolve in water, that solution is going to be a beautiful color. The lanthanides in the top row of the F block, that lower section, they are rare earth metals and they easily oxidize. We most often use them in very specific technology machines like MRIs or um, detecting things like a smoke detector. The lower section bottom row, those are really just radioactive. We don't do a lot with them, um, but they are, I believe all man-made, perhaps not. Oh no, the first few are not man-made. Everything bigger than uranium is man-made. So um, some of those are man-made. Then, um, Group 17, those are the halogens. They are diatomic. They are the most reactive of the non-metals. They are poisonous. They are uh, fluorine and chlorine are gases. Bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid at room temperature. And last on this list, we have group 18, which is inert, meaning they are unreactive and they have a full valence shell. Usually that means eight valence electrons, but in the case of helium, it just means two. Properties of the metalloids, which I left off, unfortunately, is that they are somewhere between a metal and a non-metal, and they can be found on two sides of the staircase line. They're typically shiny but brittle. Um, so they're shiny like metals and they're brittle like non-metals. Periodic table trends. Here I have um, four examples of each asking which of the two has a higher electronegativity a higher ionization energy, and then a larger radius. You should be able to use the lucky corner method. So which element is closer to fluorine or francium for their respective trend asks? 
And here are those answers. The elements with the higher electronegativity are going to be closer to fluorine. So all you have to do is look at your periodic table and judge how close this element is to fluorine because fluorine has the highest electronegativity on the table coming in at 4.0. So for electronegativity, it is going to be the element that is most to the top of the table and most to the right of the table. For ionization energy, it is the same concept. The lucky corner winner is fluorine because fluorine has the highest ionization energy. So we are going to choose the element that is closest to the top or closest to the right for each pair. Finally, which element has the larger radius? Francium is the winner of that lucky corner uh, tug of war. The one with the largest radius is going to be closest to francium or it's going to be on the bottom or the most to the left of the pair. Of course, you can't just know the periodic table trends. You have to understand why those trends occur. So take a minute to explain how each of the following affects a periodic table trend. First up is shielding and second is nuclear charge. Shielding affects the trends in a periodic table group or going down a column of the periodic table. As you go down the periodic table, we add a principal energy level, which is going to increase the amount of repulsive forces between electrons. And we're also adding more energy levels. So this is going to mean that the nucleus is going to be less and less and less attracted as you go down the group to the valence electrons because they are getting further and further away and there are increased repulsive forces. Now going across a period, we are going to increase nuclear charge, which is just the charge of the nucleus indicated by the addition of protons. So going from left to right, I hope that came out right, <laughs> I've mirror imaged. Um, going from left to right across the periodic table, you are going to increase the number of protons, but you will not increase the number of electron energy levels. Because electrons move ridiculously fast, the protons don't really have the ability to grab onto a single electron and attract it, but instead they attract the entire energy level and pull it in. The more protons you have, the tighter and tighter and tighter those electrons can be pulled in so they have a stronger attractive force. So this is going to mean that it is harder to um, lose an electron when it's closer to the nucleus. So that is why lithium is actually larger than fluorine. Lithium doesn't have a lot of power to pull in its electrons, but fluorine has nine protons, a lot of power to pull them in. And in that case, it's hard for other atoms to take them away, which is ionization energy. Last up, I would love for you to write some electron configurations. Here, there are three elements. We have fluorine, vanadium, and strontium. For each of the elements, I wrote the electron configuration. Fluorine is the, um, it's in the P block. So the last big number is going to correspond to its period number. So that would give me uh, 2P, and then it is the fifth element in the P block. So it would be 2P5. For vanadium, I'm working with the D shift. So even though it's in the fourth period, it is going to end in a 3D orbital. Um, and in this case, I also decided to use the noble gas shorthand configuration where you have to take an element, um, you have to take a noble gas that is smaller than the element in question in terms of its atomic number. And you have to choose the closest one. So vanadium, the closest and smaller noble gas is going to be argon with 18 electrons. And then I just went from that 18 forward in the um, diagonal rule. Also with hacking the periodic table, argon is in the third period. So in the diagonal rule, I know that I would have left off on 3P6. Finally, with strontium, with 38 electrons, that's a big one. Um, in this case, I decided to write it all out. I followed the full diagonal rule. Um, I could have done krypton with 36 protons right uh, here in place of the 3P6 and taking out all of this that comes before it. I could just put krypton here in brackets and then polished it off with 5S2. Next up, I would love for you to look at these configurations and tell me the element that they represent. Three P three is going to represent 
phosphorus. I know this because it's a P block, so there's no shifting happening. Um, so I can go to period three in the P block and count three elements over, and that would give me phosphorus. Then I am looking at krypton plus 5s2 plus 4d3. So because there's the D shift and I'm ending in 4d, I know that I have to add one to get the period number. So I am going to have a 5d electron. It's going to look like it's 5d. It's going to be in the fifth period of the D block. And the fifth period D block three elements in would be Nb, which is niobium. And then um, again, we're going to end in a, a D but 3D really means the fourth period. So I'm gonna to go to the fourth period D block and I'm gonna count eight elements across and that is going to leave me with nickel and I. Looking at these, you should be able to determine if you feel ready for a test from your teacher. If not, I would go back, find the things that were a little funny to you, go watch those videos, maybe replay this in a few hours when you've maybe forgotten the questions um, and see how you do then. If you have any questions, please, please, please leave them in the comments below the video. I'd be happy to help you. Please also subscribe so you don't miss the next set of lessons. We're moving into chemical bonding. Hope to see you there. Bye.